What is up, everybody? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another Week 9 college football preview. And y'all know what Fridays are. This is the day for all our FCS and SWAC previews, and we're kicking it off today. Jackson State traveling down to Itabina, Mississippi, to face Mississippi Valley State. And this game will not be on TV, so y'all got to go to Mississippi Valley's YouTube channel. They'll be live streaming it there, so make sure to go at least check out their YouTube channel at 3 o'clock on Saturday. And this will be an interesting battle as we have you know Jackson State absolutely having full control of that SWAC East division right now. And then you have Mississippi Valley State who – really has exceeded their preseason expectations. And now all that's left this year is they're just looking to pull off a big upset to give them really their defining win of the season. But to set the stage, you got the Tigers 6-1, and 4-0 and in conference in the SWAC, and they've been on a tear the past three games, guys. I mean, I was kind of looking at it and noticing like this trend. I mean, they've outscored their last three opponents 131 to 34. I mean, that is an absolute beat down over their past three opponents at AM, Alabama State, and Bethune Cookman last week. And they have just, I mean, they've really, outside of the first half, I would say, possibly against Alabama State, I mean, they haven't even been in any type of even trouble, contention, anything like that. And they really have firm control of the SWAC East right now, but Coach Prom will be absent again this weekend, which means Gary Harrell will lead this team again, but they're looking to just keep winning. They control their own destiny. All they have to do is win three of their last four SWAC games, and they clinch a spot in the SWAC championship game. So this team, I don't think, will be lacking any motivation when they travel to face this Mississippi Valley team. But – the Delta Devils come into this one two and five, one and three in the SWAC, and they're looking to pull off a, a you know some sort of major upset this week. I mean, if Mississippi Valley State could somehow find a way to pull this off, I mean, you're talking about it changing just the entire program's perception like this season. I mean, that's how big of an upset it was. They they could have possibly pulled it off against FAMU last weekend. But for it to happen this weekend, this coaching staff and the Delta Devils have to find some offensive consistency. But there's nothing dangerous, more dangerous in college football than a team with nothing to lose. And Mississippi Valley comes into this game with absolutely nothing to lose and literally could gain the world this weekend with an upset win. But kind of setting the last, you know, the last part of this stage, the 70th matchup this weekend between Jackson State and Mississippi Valley State. But really and truly, man, the Tigers have dominated this series. You know, according to Jackson State's website, I mean, they lead it 60 to 7 and only two ties in this series. I mean, they have absolutely dominated Mississippi Valley State and they've won 24 out of the last 26 meetings between these two programs. So that's kind of the stage that we're going to have Saturday, Saturday afternoon. But let's get to the keys of the game, man. The key for Jackson State is going to be no different because it's clear what the key on the offensive side of the ball is going to be. And I've told you this multiple weeks on this channel. It starts and it ends with Shador Sanders and this passing game that has really been electric and have really caught their stride over these past few games. And now they get to face this Mississippi Valley defense, allowing over 220 through the air per game. And they've ranked 10th in the SWAC right now in pass defense. And that's something I know Jackson State is looking to take advantage of. After having multiple great performances, when you look you know, at Shador Sanders over these past three games, he has four passing touchdowns in two of the last three games. And he was already named one of the favorites for that FCS Freshman of the Year award for the entire FCS. And, you know, I was on the roundtable on All Scripts channel this week, you know, with Dr. Cavill. I said that he should win the FCS Offensive Player of the Year right now. I think he's been the best player on the best team, and I think right now he's been one of the best offensive players in the SWAC easily. So I think right now he's the favorite for that award as well. When you look, he's completing almost 70% of his passes, over 1,800 yards, 17 touchdowns, only one turnover, and he's tied for the lead in rushing touchdowns on this team right now with three. And in the SWAC, he's second in passing yards, 
first in completion percentage, tied for first in passing touchdowns, and he's first in passing efficiency. It has been an overall outstanding year for Shador Sanders. And when you look at what makes what's made the season so special for him, it's one pocket presence. Let's just give the kid his flowers. The pocket presence is that of, of a real, real experienced quarterback. And this and this guy's only a true freshman, really. Decision making has been on point, only one turnover. And the down the field passing has really evolved over these past few games where he's been one of the more efficient downfield passers with his deep ball. And that was one thing that was missing earlier this year. And he's really kind of hit his stride over these past few games. If he's a, if, if he's as efficient as he's been all season and just as explosive as he's been over the last three games, the Delta Devils could be in some real trouble when Jackson State rolls into town. And this is something, you know, we've talked a little bit about it on this channel. I know some other ones have covered it. The wide receivers and the development of, you know, some of these guys breaking out late in the season have really stepped this offensive game up. You know, it, early in the season, it was a lot of short route concepts with Warren Newman and Josh Lanier, and it's really evolved into a deep ball threat as Malachi Wobbin and Keith Corbin have really started hitting their stride at that wide receiver spot. Now, the DBs for Mississippi Valley State are going to have to have one of their best games. They're going to have to be disciplined. They're going to have to execute, and they're going to have to play at an extremely high level if they even want to stand a chance this weekend. You look at Malachi Wobbin, who's really emerged from AM onward, 17 catches, almost 300 yards, six touchdowns, guys. He already ranks second in the conference in receiving touchdowns, and he's really only played like three games. I mean, that's the type of production. I mean, I, per I personally said on the roundtable, I think he should win freshman of the year right now. And I think the trajectory he's on a big game this weekend will really solidify that pick. I mean, he has been every bit and more that Jackson State fans could have wanted. I said when he committed, I thought he had the highest upside. Him and Quadarius Davis had the highest upside of any players on this Jackson State team at the wide receiving spot. And so I think Malachi Wadman is really living up to that potential. Now, Keith Corbin also, 34 catches over 540 yards and four touchdowns. He's been electric as well. And I also expect to see a little bit of Josh Lanier this weekend, who really is kind of their underneath threat. It can turn just small passes into big gains there. And the one thing, too, I just want to briefly touch on this before moving on. The rushing attack doesn't have to be great. Jackson State has shown they can win without it. But for me, you have to play better than what you showed last weekend. Jackson State rushed for 23 total yards last last week, which was their lowest output of the season thus far. You're going to have to run for, I, I would say, man, if you can get Shador 75 to 100 yards to kind of help him open things up, Jackson State go, goes to a whole nother level. But the offensive line and running game have to be better this weekend. And so that's another thing I'm looking for this weekend to help possibly be like, you know, one of those minor keys for Jackson State this weekend. Now for Valley. I could say the key is to hope and pray that, you know, the unthinkable happens. But really and truly, it has to be the rushing attack. When you look at a team trying to pull a big upset, your best player on offense has to have an outstanding game, and that's the running back, Caleb Johnson. And also on top of that, the Delta Devils passing game has really struggled this year. Only 137 yards per game through the air, six touchdowns and six interceptions. So the rushing attack really has to get going. And, you know, as Jackson State has to use the pass to set up the run. I mean, their run game isn't going to be strong off the bat, so it's kind of opposite. For Mississippi Valley State, they got to use the run game to set up the pass because they don't have a quarterback like a Shador Sanders. But the rushing attack has been a bright spot of this offense. Over 130 yards per game on the ground, ranked in the top half of the SWAC, and it has to be the focal point this weekend if they want any chance. Caleb Johnson, 545 on the ground, Five touchdowns. He's top five in the SWAC in rushing yards right now. He's going to have a big game. And um, I believe it's uh, the Darian Williams, the rotational guy running back, over almost 200 yards, a touchdown. He's going to have a big game. He had a big game against FAMU and was a big key. And while they could almost pull up that up, uh, pull off that upset, these two guys are going to have to have career days against Jackson State. Way easier said than done, especially with that front seven of JSU. But 
on top of that, man, the passing attack doesn't have to be great. It's kind of in the same boat as I was just talking about Jackson State's run game. They're not going to have to be great, but they're going to have to avoid turnovers and also just be consistent. Make a handful of throws to keep Jackson State honest, but don't fall into what Bethune did and just give Jackson State three big turnovers and let Shiloh run it all the way back to the two yard line. You can't give them you can't give them extra possessions, but you at least have to test them and make and make that defense play a bit of you know some sort of honest type of football. When you look at this, when you look at this Mississippi Valley team, they they have they have two games with less than a hundred passing yards, only one game with over two hundred passing yards, and only one game with over a pass with with one or more passing touchdowns. I mean, that cannot happen this weekend. You're gonna have to show some sort of consistency and some sort of level of execution through the air because you cannot beat Jackson State one dimensional. And I've said that weekend. And week out, when you look at Jelani Eason, 800 yards passing, six touchdowns, three picks. He's got to play big time football, you know, this weekend. He's got to be a playmaker. And this is going to be a really, really tough test for this Valley offense that hasn't played extremely well this year. But when, when you look at this offensive unit, they're putting up 271 a game. They're averaging only 16 points per game right now to this point of the season. I mean, they're going to have to pull some. I mean, right now you have nothing to lose if you're Valley. Go ahead, throw the playbook out, and throw everything you have. I mean, you got to pull something out here because if you just try to run your basic offensive scheme, Jackson State has a chance to shut you out. And it, as crazy as that sounds, that is a real, real possibility if Mississippi Valley State does not pull out some sort of offensive, I guess, creativity or surprises or anything against Jackson State this weekend. But moving to the matchup to watch, man, for me, it's going to be the Jackson State offensive line against this defensive line for Valley because the number one thing Valley has to do on defense is, one, try to make Jackson State one-dimensional. We saw what happened against Alabama AM when they could run the ball for 200 yards. Shador was cooking with multiple passing touchdowns. They're going to put up ridiculous points if you do that. So stop the run and find a way to make Shador uncomfortable, which no one really has been able to do, you know, in the second half of the season thus far because his pocket presence is just getting better and better each week. But the Jackson State offensive line is going to have to figure it out this weekend. I don't want the injury excuse, anything like that. This O-line for me is way too talented to be performing like they are. And some some may say it's hating, but I've heard this from players' parents, you know, and multiple players' parents. The offensive line should be playing better. And, I, and they've been moving pieces around and everything, but it's week nine. You've got to figure out who – who is your five best playmakers on that front at each position and let them go make plays. They've allowed two or more sacks in every single game other than the A&M game, and they've given up 10 sacks the past two games and gave up a season-high seven to Bethune-Cookman last week. They tie for dead last in the swag for sacks allowed with Alabama A&M and Alcorn. So for me, can we please get Shador Sanders some help this weekend? That's all I'm asking. He's putting up stupid stats, and he's going to win all these awards, and it's not due to anything that the offensive line has done. He is doing it on his own. So can we please give his back a break this weekend so he doesn't have to carry this offensive line all the way to the finish line? I'm expecting this offensive line to find a way to play better this weekend because they keep losing the line of scrimmage battle, and that cannot happen on the road this weekend. And the rushing attack suffered two men, only 89 rushing yards per game, only 2.9 average for the season. They're going to have to play better, and they're too good to be losing a lot of scrimmage battles to defensive lines that really don't match up with them well at all. But the Mississippi Valley defensive front has some talent, but they're going to have to step up in a big way. They've allowed over 100 yards rushing in the last three games, including Alcorn running for over 200 yards a few weeks ago. They're allowing 166 on the ground right now. That's seventh in the SWAC. And they, they also rank seventh in the SWAC with 16 sacks this season. And they But they do have one or more sacks in every game. They're going to have to have a giant game in that front seven for them to even possibly have a chance at this game. So for me, looking at this game, you know, I'm doing the preview because 
we have a lot of Jackson State people on this channel. I don't think it's going to be, you know, even I, I know they're scrappy. I know it's on the road and everyone's like, well, saw what they did to FAMU. FAMU left a lot of points on the board and they're not going to let I don't think Jackson State is going to let them back into the game like FAMU did. FAMU was running away with that one. If it's just something took a left turn. I have Jackson State big this weekend. I have Jackson State 42 Mississippi Valley State six this weekend. Another blowout performance by Jackson State. If if there was any sort of if I could trust the offense for Valley, it would be a little bit closer. But right now, I just don't think they can. And what I think is going to happen is their offense isn't going to be able to establish drives. And Jackson State's just going to keep putting points on the board. So a big win this weekend for the Tigers, forty-two to six, Jackson State over Valley this weekend on the road. So guys, make sure to tune in that game. It's on Mississippi Valley State's YouTube channel. I'll try to find a link and post it in the description sometime to, sometime today. So make sure to check that out. But guys, I appreciate y'all tuning in. If you're new, like the video and subscribe and go ahead and comment your score predictions below and comment your thoughts on the game and what you're looking to see this weekend. But guys, I appreciate y'all rocking with me. If you're traveling over there to see the game, man, y'all be safe. And I'll see y'all on Monday for our SWAC recap. But until then, man, the Blue Bloods are out. Oh,